Happy Wisdom Wednesday with JFO. Today's topic, what are horoscopes? Guess what? I don't like horoscopes. I know. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Here's the deal. I love astrology. It's probably my biggest passion in the world. I'm constantly talking about it. I want everyone to know about it. I think this energy language of the Zodiac is the most incredible thing in the world, and I feel like I have magic in my pocket every single day, and you can too if you learn the Zodiac. But the problem is there's spiritual astrology and there's superficial astrology. Wah, wah. Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you. There's two versions. You can do the spiritual astrology if you follow JFO's way. Or the superficial astrology, which is kind of judgy. It's a little bit judgy of people. Now, I believe horoscopes can be really fun. And there's some there's some astrologers who do it right, like Susan Miller. She's mastered it, people. She's so good. And I will be the first to give her traffic to her website. You're welcome, Susan. Fly me to the moon. But here's the deal. She's in the business of horoscopes. She's trying to take ridiculous complex data and give it to you without knowing who you are. That's really hard to do. There are so many cycles happening in the universe at one time. Pluto takes like 15 years to just leave one sign and there's 12 signs. I think it's around like 100, 144 years that it takes to go through the entire zodiac where the moon takes 28 days. So there's a lot happening, a lot of changes are occurring, and I don't know what time you were born. I don't know your actual birth chart and what it all looks like, right? So I can't actually tell you where the moon is transiting. Is it in your sixth house? Is it in your seventh house? Is it squaring your natal Pluto? I don't fucking know. This is why you would hire me, right? So because I can't tell you the specific information for your chart, and no astrologer can do that unless they're looking at your chart specifically and the exact day of time that you want them to analyze for you, aka your wedding day or something like that, that's why you would hire an astrologer. But since we can't do that, we have to generalize it, right? So what do astrologers do? I actually recently found this out in the last three or four years. I actually didn't know. I was stumped. How are they doing this? This information is too complex. There's so much going on. There's just no way. I found out that what they do is they take your sun sign. So what that means is basically when you think of the sun sign, just think of our calendar. So every, you know, end of the month around anywhere between the 19th, 20th, all the way to the the 22nd, 23rd, depending on the month and the year, that is when the sun changes signs, okay? And so if you're born in April, in the middle of April, you're an Aries. If you're born toward the end of April, you're going to be most likely a Taurus. And people talk about the cusp. Lies. They're lying to you. There's no such thing as the cusp. You're either, either 29 degrees one sign or zero degrees the next sign. And it's all based on the exact time you were born. So what do astrologers do? They take your sun sign and they make it your rising sign for the horoscope. Now, not to get too technical, I'm going to show you a picture right now. So this is what a birth chart looks like and a very popular house system. And we're not going to get too technical into this but there's various different house systems. The the house system that I use as an astrologer and the most popular one is right here, Placidius, okay? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's the type of house system most astrologers use. And as you can see, what that does is it creates each house is starts at a completely different degree, okay? So I'm gonna show you right here. So this person's Um, first house, which is what we call the rising sign or the ascendant starts at 13 degrees Leo. Now you can do, um, an equal house system. And what would happen is because this is 13 degrees Leo, then it would just follow suit. So this would be 13 degrees Virgo, 13 degrees Libra, 13 degrees Scorpio, and so on and so on. 
but we don't use equal houses. It's not the most popular. So I love that. This is what I've always used, right? So this, this house is actually four degrees Virgo, and this house is zero degrees Libra, and this house is um, two degrees Scorpio, and so on and so on, right? And this is where you can see the degrees. Why that's important is because these on the outside, these are the, the planets of now. This inside are the planets when you were born, frozen in time, the minute you came to Earth. So this is the natal chart. This is the transit planets on the outside. So when someone's doing a horoscope, what you're really reading is what's happening now, where it is, where is it in your natal picture, in your natal chart. So as you can see, here are the transit information over here. So this is just transit information for the day. Um, and we'll use Saturn as an example. So we can see the Saturn right now is four degrees Sagittarius, four degrees. This person, Sagittarius, doesn't start until nine degrees. So see, it's a couple degrees away from the fifth house, but it actually falls in the fourth house. So if someone came to me and said, oh, I'm struggling at home. I feel like I'm having just this intense energy at home. Well, that's because Saturn's in their home house right now. And it's making them feel very serious about home matters, right? But if you were to read a horoscope, see, now this person is sun sign Sagittarius. So that means that their sign is Sagittarius, okay? So if this person, you know, went online and searched Sagittarius horoscope, what's going to happen is they're, what, if, when they read about Saturn, for example, it's going to say Saturn is transiting through your first house, which, as you can see, is not accurate because it's transiting in their fourth house. Well, why is that? Why is that happening? It's because as horoscopes, we have to generalize. We have to generalize what's happening, okay? So we have to take your sun sign and we make, have to make it the first house and we have to make it a whole sign chart. And that's what th this looks like. Ready? Here we go. This is a whole sign chart. Now ignore the inside stuff. But basically what we did is we took this person's sun sign, Sagittarius, we made it the first full house, and now we're reading the solar horoscope, right? So now we're saying Saturn is transiting through your first house and Pluto is transiting through your second house and the sun currently is transiting through your fifth house. And this reading isn't necessarily wrong. It can, if you do it right, it can reflect what you're feeling right now and what, and what you're going through right now and the themes that are happening in your life right now. But this one is the mo more accurate one. This is going to tell you the exact accurate information. See what I mean? Okay. So there you have it. Now you kind of have a visual to sort of understand what this rising sign is, what this first house is, and that's what they do. So the combination that they're reading for you, because again, remember astrology is a three-layered cake, the planet, the sign, and the house. That combination they're reading for you for the horoscope of, you know, this day or whatever, they're doing it based on your sun sign and making it the rising sign and giving you a solar horoscope. It's just a generalized horoscope. And yes, sometimes it does fit. Sometimes it does work. And if you do it correctly and you do it right, you can get a little bit of an energy that's going to kind of work for what's going on in your life. But it's not specific. Again, this is why I believe that true astrology is a spiritual, a spiritual study. Because you, again, are more than your sign then your birth chart, all of that, right? Yes, there are going to be certain days in your life where certain events happen and certain experiences occur. And you're going to say, why? Why did that happen? And you could turn to the birth chart and look. And so again, I want to use the phrases. Natal chart means your birth chart. The exact picture of the sky when you were born. A progress chart is just your chart in real time. It's how your chart has progressed over the years that you've been alive. Okay, not to get too complicated, but you, so you have your natal chart, the exact picture of the sky when you were born, and then your progress chart. And you can study both. There's not a wrong or right way with astrology. You can study both, right? And a synastry chart is just your chart meeting another person's natal chart. Your two natal charts coming together 
and you create you can create an actual chart for the relationship right there's really cool things that you can do with astrology so when you're talking about horoscopes you're talking about transit your transit information it's the planets of now in your natal chart and what they're triggering up okay so these certain events can happen in your life and you can look at the transit information for that day and say oh my goodness that is what was happening. That is the root of what I was feeling. Now I can kind of understand what the universe is trying to teach me, right? That's the spiritual approach to astrology. The superficial approach to astrology is more like, today the moon is in the third house and I am going to want to cry. Like it's very generalized. It's not really accurate. But hey, I'm the first to have fun with it. Let's pour some wine and be a little superficial. Why not? I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. You can email me at askjfo at gmail.com. Please share this video with your friends. The world needs to know the truth behind horoscopes. And make sure you like this video and come on over and subscribe to my newsletter, www.jenniferforcelli.com. Thanks, guys. When I get home, brush the sea. If she called or even left a message for me in a flash all along.